Hi and welcome to the Forest of Arda. My name is Chris Ryan. Today we're talking short game and this is part two of a small video series. If you haven't seen part one, I would advise you watching that first. I will link it in the description box down below because this video does follow on from that. In that first video, we talked a little bit about how the club interacts with the ground and about how you can control where that interaction happens, which is going to give you hopefully the ability to hit the ball on different trajectories with different amounts of spin and different amounts of rollouts. Therefore, this video is all about how you can start to practice this and how you can then develop it to the point where you feel comfortable on the golf course. All you're going to need to practice is one of your wedges, two golf balls, and obviously a place to practice. I'm on the 17th green here on the Arden course, par five, and this is called the high-low game. What you're going to do is you're going to take one wedge and you're going to use the same wedge for all of these shots. And you're going to find yourself or place yourself in different positions around the green. And with your two shots, you are going to try and hit them as close to the flag as you can, but you're going to try and hit them on completely different trajectories. So the first one is going to be very high, the second one is going to be very low. It doesn't have to be in that order, but you're going to hit two different types of shots. So what this is going to do is it's going to get you to start to really think about the how and the where. So how is the golf club interacting with the ground? And where is the golf club interacting with the ground? Those are the two things we were trying to control in video one. The other thing it's going to do, it's going to get you to really start to think a little bit more about your shot selection. So for example, this one here, I might opt for the high shot. That might be the one I choose on the course. But in this little exercise, I've got to hit the low shot. So it's starting to put me a little bit out of my comfort zone, starting to get me to hit shots that maybe I wouldn't normally hit. I then have to think a little bit more about, OK, so where's that ball got to land? How's it going to react? And I'm hitting shots that I might not be that comfortable with. The other advantage to this is that if I'm in a situation where I would play a high shot, the lie might dictate that I can't play that. It's a very bare lie, it's sitting on some dirt maybe, I can't get the club under the ball, I have to play that low shot. So you may well look at this exercise and say, well, why would I play a low shot when the situation doesn't really call for that? There may well be situations on the golf course where you have to do that. You might have to think about landing the ball in the rough. You might have to think about using banks or slopes. It's a great way to start to change what happens down at impact but also then think about how you're gonna get that ball close to the hole. So let's have a go. So this is probably best part of 30 yards, maybe just a little bit less, but there's a little ridge in the green. Now, for me, flying it over that ridge would probably be what I would do on the golf course. So the first one I'm gonna hit is gonna be, not the highest shot, but it's going to be relatively high. Okay, and that's going to roll out not too badly, a little bit short of distance. Kind of read it pretty well, it kind of broke off the left, so I kind of picked the shot pretty well, just a little bit short on distance. Notice there was no divot. Now this one is going to be my low one, so I'm going to try and think about, again, how's that ball going to react on the green? So I'm going to try and change my how. The, glove is, the golf club is going to interact with the ground very differently, and I've got to change the where. It's going to interact more to the right of me. So there's going to be some, certainly some distances here. So I'm going to get this a lot lower. Okay, and you can see that flight was a lot, lot lower. And the result is actually slightly better than the first one. But again, a very, very different interaction with the ground. You can see the divot and that wasn't present on the first one. So let me just go to a couple of different locations. I'll just hit a few more shots for you. You can see how this game works. So second shot, slightly different situation, um, slightly different grass type as well, a little bit longer. Certainly would affect the interaction between the club and the ball, might affect the spin as well. Um, I've only got maybe two paces before I reach the green and I've definitely got a shorter shot. So for me, the shot that I probably would play here would be the low one. So I'm gonna play that one first. Okay, and probably I'd advise you to always play you know, first of all, the shot that you would play. Now, execution was pretty poor on that one. The shot choice was okay, contact was good, flight was as I wanted it, just a little bit short on pace. Um, so the second shot I'm gonna have to hit is gonna have to be a higher shot. And again, this isn't the one that I would use on the golf course, but this little exercise we're doing is gonna make me hit that shot. So I'm going to change the how and the where. I'm gonna change how the club interacts with the ground, and I'm gonna change where the club interacts with the ground to give me a different flight. Okay, and you can see that one much, much higher, landed it much further. I had to change the speed, I had to change the, the ball speed, I had to change the launch angle, all those kind of things I had to change. Let's do one more shot and then we'll finish up. 
So the last shot I'm going to play in this little video, um, a tricky one, I've got a lot of this fringe grass, a little bit of a rise, and then the green over there, so a tricky one. So I'm going to play, first one I'm going to play is a little bit of a higher one, trying to take out some of this fringe grass. Okay, and I wouldn't be unhappy with that. A little bit short, but again, interaction with the ground was as I wanted. Next one I'm going to play much lower, so I'm going to change how the club interacts with the ground and where. Okay, and not brilliant. Again, just a little bit shorter pace, but I had to use the bank. So you can see how I have to change my thought process. I have to look a little bit differently. I have to think a little bit differently. And that's really the purpose of this little exercise is to get you to change your shot type, put yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone, and then think a little bit about how you're gonna to have to get that ball close. That last shot there, I might not have played that with a 58 degree wedge. I might have played it with a different club, but I'm having to use this club. I'm having to get used to changing the loft, changing the interaction with the ground, and ultimately hitting different types of shots. That is definitely gonna help you in your golf game, definitely gonna increase your skill level. So hopefully that video is helpful. Hopefully the first one and the second one together give, yourselves, uh, give you an idea of how you're gonna practice next time you get chance. Definitely think that can help you lower your score. Thank you for watching. All the usual stuff is down below. Uh, like button, comments box, and also a link to subscribe. Make sure you do, if you're not a subscriber, free videos each and every week. Thank you again for watching. We shall see you again soon.